Murphy, no pull. Here. Good. You'll hear me make noises every once in a while, just weird noises. Sometimes I whistle, sometimes I make farty noises, like, huh? And sometimes I make squeak noises and stuff like that. I'm just trying to make a noise that gets the dog attention, the dog's attention. And I use a bunch of different noises so they don't get used to just one noise. Otherwise they hear that one noise all the time and it doesn't work. That's why when uh, people yell at their dogs all the time, when it comes down to it and a dog gets out and it's running away and stuff like that, or maybe it might get hit by a car and they yell, the dog pays no attention because it's used to it. But if you don't yell at your dog all the time and you do have to yell at your dog, it'll stop. It'll shock the dog. It's just a, a noise. Like they don't know what you're saying. It's just a shock that you're saying something really loud. Good. Yeah, so if you don't yell at your dog all the time and your dog's not used to it, you can use it to snap dogs out. Huh? Of whatever funk they're in. Sometimes you just have to be loud. Mind you, if you are raising your voice or anything with a dog, you don't do it out of frustration. Because as soon as you're really frustrated, uh, they can feel it. They can hear it in your voice, whether you're yelling or not, like making your voice loud. They can see it in your body language and everything else. If you're frustrated, your dog is not going to learn. Oh, stay cool. Forgot to take his collar off. We don't wear collars in the house, do we? Because it makes mats. And we don't want neck mats. No, we don't. Look at how sweet they are. Hey, what are you doing? Hmm? Yeah. So anything you're training your dog, if you find yourself getting frustrated easy, uh, that's something you should be working on first yourself. Woo, Yelp is uh, not getting frustrated. Being able to calm yourself down and regulate yourself. Get down. Nope, get down. So I won't open this door. I gotta turn away so I can put my code in. Nope, get down. I'm not gonna let them in if he's jumping up like that because I don't want him jumping on the door. My paws are wet and gross. And, uh, makes marks. Let's shut this door. Oh, hello, my poopy boy. So when the owner is not home, I do put them behind a gate. And it's actually pretty easy. You teach it the same way you would teach a kennel. So I just say, go in. And they go in and I give them treats. And so they do it right away because they know they're going to get rewarded for doing it. Right? Koopy didn't poop. You must learn how to go that bad. Ah. Good boys. Nope. Get down. Good boys. Nope. Get down. Good. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're gonna walk. <laughs> Murph, down. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Go in. I don't know why this cane is on the floor. I'm going to move it. Put this gate up. They ran right in for me. And set the baby gate up. There we go. And now that I've done that, I'm going to take a handful of treats. I have. And just give it a throw on the floor. Go get them. And they're going to search for them. And I'm going to leave. And that's it.